in the 21st century, there is one more amana that we will discuss before we close. An amana that is screaming out, saying, please give me attention. Another trust that many Muslims are betraying and violating perhaps on a daily basis. This is the amana of access. The ability to reach the haram in utmost ease. I now turn our attentions, brothers and sisters, to an ayah from Surah Al-Ma'idah, and you will see the link between the topic of amana and access and this ayah. Allah says, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, لَيَبْلُوَنَّكُمُ اللَّهُ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الصَّيْدِ تَنَادُهُ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَرِمَاحُكُمْ لِيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَخَافُهُ بِالْغَيْبَ فَمَنْ اِعْتَدَى بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ فَلَهُ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Oh, you who believe. Allah Almighty will surely test you through some of the game animal. The game animal is the land animal that is usually hunted for food. Allah will certainly test you through some of the game animal which your hands and your spears can reach so that Allah may reveal those who fear him in the unseen. But whoever transgresses after this, he will have a severe punishment. What does that ayah mean? It is well known that when a person is in a state of ihram, carrying out his or her pilgrimage for hajj or for umrah, there are certain things that you cannot do. And one of these things is Sayyid, chasing after the game animal, what we call hunting. Hunting the land animal is impermissible for a person who is in a state of ihram. There were a group of companions of the Prophet ﷺ who were in this state of ihram and they were walking. And all of a sudden, the land animals, the game animal that is hunted, began flocking towards the Sahaba. And these animals, were now within reach. And all they needed to do was reach out and take from the animals and the finest and most expensive of food will be served. Bearing in mind the hunger of the Sahaba and bearing in mind the poverty of the Sahaba, for the most part, this was a fitna and a half. But the animals came close to them and no weaponry was needed to hunt them. And despite that, not a single Sahabi hunted a single animal. So Allah Almighty revealed this ayah, listen to it again, it will now make sense. O oh, you who believe, Allah will certainly test you through some of the game animal which your hands and your spears can reach. Why did Allah test them with this fitnah? So that He may show the ones who fear Him in the unseen. Ya Salam. Ten years ago, accessing haram needed effort. We needed to go out of our ways should we be pursuing an element of haram. We needed to struggle for it and hunt it down and pursue it. Nowadays, however, with the advent of technology and mass communication, such effort is not needed anymore. Tanaluhu aydikum, your hands can reach it. Now at the click of a button, one of us may access the most obscene of images and videos via the net. And now in order to communicate with the opposite gender, you no longer need to throw a paper airplane hoping it will fall in the balcony of this girl. You don't need to do that. Now it's just a mobile phone telephone number, an 11 digit number, or the social media profile name of this individual. And you have one to one private access with this person at any hour of the day. A fitna. Why has Allah Ta'ala allowed this fitna to fall into our homes? So that Allah may show the ones who fear Him in the unseen. It is a similar fitna, a fitna that your hands can now reach. We speak now, brothers and sisters, of the amana, the trust of accessibility, the accessibility to sin. Allahu Akbar. One of the Salaf would say, خَوْفُكَ مِنَ الرِّيحِ إِذْ حَرَّكَتْ سِتْرَ بَابِكَ وَأَنْتَ عَلَى ذَنْبِكَ أَعْظَمُ مِنَ الذَّنْبِ إِذَا فَعَلْتَهِ He said, your fear that came into your heart, when the door began to move, 
as you are engaging in the sin that is greater and worse in the eyes of Allah than the sin itself. That fear that you have that somebody was looking at you, man was looking at you, and the door began to move. He says, the fear that came into your heart at that moment is greater and worse in the eyes of Allah than the sin itself because Allah was worthier of that fear. And one of our brothers, may Allah pardon him and us, he says, سَمِعْتُ خَشْخَشَ عَلَى الْبَابِ I was once engaging in haram behind my laptop and I began to hear the door moving. He says, بَلَغَ قَلْبِ حُنْجُرَتِي My heart leapt up to my throat. And I quickly turned off my computer and I ran to the door. فَإِذَا هِيَ هِرَّةِ I opened the door and it was just a cat. That fear that you had at that moment of man is worse in the eyes of Allah than the sin itself that one of us may be engaging in. Allahu Akbar. لا تكن لله وليا في الظاهر وعدوا لله في الباطن. Beware, my brother, of being an ally, a friend of Allah in public, but an enemy of Allah Almighty in private. This contradiction in the personality of many Muslims may never be discovered today. 30, 40, 60 years may pass and nobody may discover that you have this contradiction in your personality between your public and private affairs. But Yawm Al-Qiyamah, it may be exposed and will cause serious issues as Imam Ibn Majah narrates in his Sunan. With an authentic chain of narration, as Shaykh Nasiruddin said, on the authority of Thawban, he said, يأتون يوم القيامة بحسنات أمثال جبال تهام بيضا فيجعلها الله هباء منثورا قالوا يا رسول الله صفهم لنا جلهم لنا ألا نكون منهم ونحن لا نعلم قال أما إنهم من إخوانكم ومن جلدتكم ويأخذون من الليل كما تأخذون ولكنهم قوم إذا خلوا بمحارم الله انتهكوها he says, I know of a people from my ummah, the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who will come on the day of judgment with good deeds, the size of mountains. Ya salam. Salah and sadaqah and the rest of it. He says, Allah Almighty will make all of these good deeds into dust. The companions were scared and they said, O Messenger of Allah, describe these people to us. Give us their description just in case we are one of them whilst we do not know. He says, they are from your brothers. And they are from your race. And they pray at night as well. Allahu Akbar, so what went wrong? He says, however, they were a people whom when they were alone, they would violate the limits of Allah. When they were alone, they would violate the limits of Allah. In other words, the amana of accessibility to sin was not upheld. It was betrayed. It was betrayed. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in conclusion, I am aware that the fitnah, yeah, today, with accessibility, is serious and it is a challenge and it is an uphill struggle for every one of us, without exception. And we hear our brothers and sisters complaining, the fitna, the haram that is available today is accessible like no other time. But why don't we turn around this phrase and be optimistic and say the opportunity of drawing closer to Allah by leaving the haram is greater than any other time. Hey, it is an opportunity. It is a privilege. There is a great risk. But the great ajr is also there potentially for the person who upholds this amanah. I conclude by asking a question. If I am a person who is struggling to uphold this amanah, the amanah of accessibility to haram, if I keep violating it behind closed doors, what do you advise I do to protect myself and to help uphold this amanah in the eyes of Allah? Three quick things that I remind myself and others with. Number one, and perhaps it's the most effective of them, Muraqabatullah. To remember that the King, Allah, is watching. He is seeing and His angels are documenting. Allah, the one who hears the footsteps and sees them. The footsteps of the dark ant during the dark night that walks on the dark stone. Allah sees it and hears it. الشنقيطي العلامة الشنقيطي would say أجمع أهل العلم على أنه تعالى لم ينزل إلى الأرض واعظ أكبر ولا زاجر أعظم من مراقبة الله 
He says the scholars of Islam are unanimously agreed that there isn't anything in existence that is more effective in helping a person protect himself from sins than muraqabah. Watchfulness of Allah and reminding yourself that He is watching. This is number one. Number two, reading the Quran with contemplation. That is the condition. Imam Ibn Taymiyyah would say in his Majmu' al Fatawa, فَإِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ Listen to this, Ikhwani. فَإِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ إِذَا قَرَأَ الْقُرْآنَ وَتَدَبَّرَهُ كَانَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ أَعْظَمِ وَمِنْ أَقْوَى أَسْبَابِ الْمَانِعَةِ مِنَ الْمَعَاصِي أَوْ مِنْ بَعْضِهَا He says, man, if he reads the Qur'an with contemplation, this will be one of the most effective means in protecting yourself from all sins, or at least some of them. Reading the Qur'an and pausing at its gems and its meanings, that is a protection from the violation of the amana of accessibility. And number three, number three, ibadah, worship in secrecy. Maximize your salah in secrecy. Your dua and sadaqah in secrecy. When no eye can see you and no ear can hear you. Ibn al-Qayyim, he would say, ذنوب الخلوات هي أصل الانتكاسات وعبادات الخفاء هي أصل الثبات. He says the sins that people commit in privacy are the main reasons why they go astray. And the good deeds that people do in privacy are the main reason why people remain firm on the path of Islam. These are three quick remedies for a person who wants to uphold the amana of accessibility, which is increasingly tough to do in the era of the 21st century.